Hello, I'm Leah. Welcome back to another pasta making tutorial. Um, I'm a member of the Pasta Evangelist team and I'm really excited today to share with you um, how to make extruded pasta. Um, so this is a bit different from the traditional kind of rolled out doughs or handmade doughs like orecchiette uh, that we've covered in the past in previous videos, but um, I'm really excited to share this one because it's a little bit different. Um, it's a little bit newer to home pasta making. Um, there's been, since, since making pasta became mechanized, uh, extruded pastas are very common. They're often dried pastas, so spaghetti, penne, rigatoni, um, but they can also be fresh and you can make them at home. You just need a pasta extruder to do that. Um, so right here I have a home pasta extruder. This is a type that attaches onto a standing kitchen mixer. Um, and basically the pasta dough is fed through the top, forced through this, and then pushed out the bottom through dyes. Um, so those are um, kind of can come in different shapes and the pasta dough is forced through them to form your shape. So uh, this one's for spaghetti, bucatini, and I also have one for rigatoni. Um, the traditional uh, dye is usually made with copper and that's because it imparts a really nice ridge on the outside of the pasta, which is perfect for catching sauce. Um, so if you go to kind of the traditional Italian producers of dried pasta, they're all gonna be using copper dyes. Um, however, my home version has a plastic dye. Um, it's gonna work just fine. There's just not going to be that uh, that nice finish on the outside of the pasta. Um, and today I uh, want to also cover some alternatives to making these extruded shapes if you don't have an extruder. Um, I'm very aware that uh, it's not very common to have a pasta extruder. Uh, you really have to be an enthusiast to probably have a pasta extruder in your house. Um, so in that sense, we'll, we'll cover spaghetti and rigatoni in the pasta extruder. And then I'm also going to discuss two alternatives. So for first spaghetti, that's going to be a uh, peachy, which is a slightly fatter uh, hand rolled uh, long strand pasta. So it's not going to be as fine as spaghetti, but you are going to be able to do it without an extruder, without a pasta machine, without anything like that. Um, you just take your dough and you're going to roll um, each strand. So it takes a little bit longer, but it's going to have a similar end result to spaghetti. Again, a little bit thicker, but um, that's your alternative if you want to avoid having to get an extruder. And then for rigatoni, so this is, um, you might not be able to see with the dye, but it's a little bit fatter hollow tube. Um, so they're probably going to be cut at two to three centimeters. I'll show that process later. Um, but if you don't have uh, a dye or an extruder to, to form these, the alternative is to use um, kind of what we call a, a gnocchi board or malaretus board to make garganelli. Um, and this is a shape that comes out of the Mille Romagna region. Uh, and you take your dough, you're going to roll it flat and cut it into little squares and then form it around a dowel. So a lot, a lot of these uh, boards come with a dowel to make, to make garganelli. Uh, if you don't have that, you can find another kind of what, half centimeter uh, with dowel if you have laying around your house or some other kind of round object, uh, round cylindrical object. Um, and I'll show this process later, but you arrange the, the square kind of offset to the board and then roll it around the dowel. And, and when you take it off, you have your, your tube shape um, that is, is a distinctly different shape than rigatoni, but it can kind of play as a replacement if you don't have the extruder. Um, so now that we've covered kind of the plan and uh, what shapes we're gonna cover, uh, I am going to get to making my dough. So now I'm ready to make my dough, and this is gonna be a variation on a, on a typical white pasta dough, pasta bianca, so it's made with just flour and water, um, but it is tailored a little bit to fit uh, an ext extruder a bit better because, um, because you are forcing dough out through dyes. It, it needs to be a little bit more malleable, a little bit softer than you would need for, say, making orecchietti or other hand-built pasta bianca shapes. So that. So for that, I've modified the recipe a little bit to do what works best for me and the extruder in the past. Um, and for that, I have 400 grams of double odd flour and semolina. So I have about a 50-50 split, um, so about 200 grams of each. And I'm just gonna put that right onto my work surface. And again, this is gonna make enough pasta for about four people, uh, which is a good amount for dinner. And then uh, I also have a pinch of salt in there um, just to kind of Add a little salt to the dough. And then I have, I have on hand a little bit more, but I'm gonna go with about 175 milliliters of water. I'm not gonna add it all at once because I might not need that full amount, um, but that's what I'm gonna start with. Uh, it's just a little bit shy of that. And then I have a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. 
I find that this helps uh, with the extruded pastas um, and just helps the machine kind of not struggle as much when trying to push them through the dies. Uh, again, if you're making hand-built shapes, you probably don't need to add the olive oil um, and you should be just fine without it. Um, now I'm gonna take my fork. Um, again, you don't have eggs this time, so not as much whisking required, but um, it is good to start immediately incorporating that flour from the outside of your well. So at this point, get rid of my fork and start with my pasta scraper. Dry. All right, so I'm just gonna keep uh, incorporating and We'll circle back when I have a dough that I'm able to knead. So at this point, I have a dough that's pretty much come together. Um, it still needs quite a bit of kneading, um, but as you see, it's pretty malleable. It's a little bit softer, I'd say. And I'm just going to keep kneading this until it becomes quite soft, and then it'll be ready to sit for about 30 minutes until um, it's ready to be either going to our extruder or also I'll also show you those those hand-built shapes as well um, at that time. I've been eating for about five minutes now and I have quite a smooth um, dough as you'll see it's kind of kneads very easily at this point it's come together really nicely so now it needs to rest for about 30 minutes so I'm going to cover it with a towel if you're in a really dry dry environment um, you can also cover it with another bowl or also Damp your, dampen your towel a little bit, um, and that'll help keep it nice and um, moist and from drying out. And then in about 30 minutes, uh, we'll go over how to make our shapes. At this point, our dough has been sitting for about half an hour, so it's nice and rested. Um, it hasn't dried out too much again because I put that bowl on top. So now we're gonna go through the process of extruding our pasta. And I'm going to start with our rigatoni shape. For this, I'm gonna take off a small piece of dough and you feed it in through the top and I'm just going to start extruding it. Okay. So I'm only going to make a couple of each because I'm making more than one different type of dough. But as you see they're uh, kind of more hollow tube, a little bit uh, longer, so two to three centimeters as I said. Um, and they're quite delicate as you can see I easily accidentally smushed one. Um, that is because the dough is a little bit softer to be able to go through the extruder. Um, but these will kind of firm up a little bit as they dry out. That is our first shape. And now I'm going to cover how to make it if you don't have the pasta extruder. Um, so for that option, we're going to again, let's take a tiny bit. Again, if you're making a lot of these, you can go ahead and use more than this, but we want to roll it out. So I have a rolling pin here. Um, Garganelli is going to traditionally be made with an egg dough. I've just made it today with a white dough because that's what I have for the extruder. Um, but feel free if you're just going to make Garganelli to go ahead and use an egg dough if you want. Um, so again, my tester shape uh, pasta sheet, uh, it's very small, but I'm just going to cut really quickly kind of some rough squares out of this. So now we have two kind of squares, so I'll start with this one. Um, you're gonna wanna just put a little bit of flour on your board and also on the dowel. And put your square, as I mentioned, kind of offset to the board. Um, and then take your dowel and just roll the uh, pasta sheet around it, being sure to press into the board. So that's gonna, one, seal together the dough but then also impart some ridges. Um, and you're gonna be left with that really nice uh, shape. So this one isn't quite round, so I'm gonna cut a little smaller. That one was maybe a little bit big because you don't want too much overlap between, uh, the, between the edges because that'll, that'll just become thicker and won't cook at the same rate. Um, but this one here, this one's a little bit better. So there you go. So there's your, your garganelli. Um, and as you see, they are a distinctly different pasta shape. Um, but again, there are some similarities in that they're both kind of a tube, hollow, um, similar thickness to the edges. 
Uh, so that's your option of if you want to make rigatoni with the pasta extruder or gaganelli with uh, your wooden board, depending on what you have available at home and what your preferences are. Um, so now we're going to switch gears and talk about spaghetti and peachy. Um, so I'll clean this up and then be back to talk about those. So now we're moving on to make our spaghetti. So I've already switched out the dye. Um, so I'm going to turn it on and uh, we'll hopefully see some spaghetti coming out. So now you can see uh, we have our spaghetti coming out of the extruder. Um, there are a few stragglers just, just going to have to do with the location of the dye and the, the density of the pasta and if it's getting pushed through at the same rate. Um, but then we're just going to cut it off and we have our spaghetti. These are a little bit shorter than I'd say you might want to go for, but as I'm only making a couple for demonstration, I think that's okay for our purposes. Um, Good. We are going to then make for the hand built option uh, peachy, which is going to be definitely thicker than this. As you see, this is kind of spaghetti. It's quite th thin, um, and it's just a little bit harder to get that that kind of consistent or thickness um, when you're hand rolling. Um, it's going to be a little bit less consistent and also a little bit less thin. Um, so. Just be aware of that when you go to make your hand rolled peachy. Um, so for that, I'm again gonna push my extruder out of the way uh, and switch gears. Um, I have a lot of dough left, so I'll kind of make more shapes after this, but um, to make, make our peachy, I'm just gonna start again with a little bit of, of dough. If you are making kind of a full set of these, feel free to use more than just this. Um, this is kind of a tester amount. Um, so even though it is, it, it is hand rolled, you're going to want to start with a rolling pin. Um, and if you have a long sheet, then feel free to just roll it as normal. I'm going to go for more of a long and thin because I'm only making a couple. And you want to get it, it doesn't have to be super thin, so that's going to be perfect for uh, making peachy. And then we're going to cut off to make kind of a straight line. And then from here you want to cut um, a strand off. So I've cut my strand here and I'm actually going to roll it on a wooden board because on a granite or a smooth surface it's just not going to catch as well. Um, again, if you're making a lot of these it might uh, be good to get a little bit bigger of a wooden board than I have here. But again, I'm only making a couple for demonstration so this will work for my purposes. So here you go, here's your peachy. Um, it is because you are kind of rolling out first and then cutting a piece from that. It is a little bit consistent, but it is fatter um, than the spaghetti. So I'll, I'll hold them up side by side. Um, I hope you can see those. Uh, spaghetti, again, a thinner shape, extruded, peachy, definitely thicker um, and hand rolled. Uh, so it kind of depends on what you're going for, what you have in terms of equipment, um, but that's gonna be a really good option alternative to making um, the spaghetti with the extruder. And also it's just a really delicious shape on its own right. Um, very traditional, often served with cacio e pepe. Um, I think also carbonara. Um, yeah, so it's a lot easier on the wooden board. Very easy to kind of get this to roll. Now see, there's a lot of techniques on how best to do this um, and do this quickly. Uh, again, um, I'm just demonstrating a few, so kind of mastery will come with time. Uh, but here's our second one. So we have two strands of peachy to kind of look at. But um, yeah, so these are our different options. Um, as I mentioned, there are many more extruded shapes out there, uh, and it kind of depends on what dyes you have. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope you learned something at least about extruding pasta and um, piqued your interest there. Um, bon appetito!